Oh. So you're panhandling, and this beautiful angel from God crosses your path. Mm. And so what happened? How did this happen? And we got to get her side of the story someday, too, for this. Definitely, I'm down. So, uh, yeah. So at the time, I was homeless probably, let's see, at least five years at the time. And um, I'm panhandling in the middle of the median there at Congress Avenue, and I never panhandle at night. I never panhandle at night. Why? I, Why? Because uh, the money's not good. Okay. You know, the money's a little bit shy, you know. It's like a waste of time. But at the time, I needed a little bit more money to get my next shot for the morning. And um, so I'm standing in the middle of this median at night, and um, it's actually, I think it's a couple weeks before New Year's Eve. It was uh, our week, it was right after Christmas. And money's good at that time of year, no matter what time it is. But, you know, uh, my addiction took off, you know, takes off during the holidays. You know, it goes, I spent a lot of money on, um, on drugs, mostly fentanyl. And uh, <clears throat> so I'm standing in the median, it's like 10 o'clock at night, Amy, pulls up on me and um, she uh, she pulls up at the light and she's in this little Volkswagen Cabrio and it's a convertible top and she pulls up and she's like, hey, gosh, she goes, you got some beautiful eyes. And I was like, thank you. And nobody had given me compliments in a while. And uh, so I kind of, you know, was like, thank you for noticing that, you know? She saw through the, the dirt and the, uh, the beard and the uh, unshaved face and everything. She just looked past all that and she sm she had this beautiful smile about her. And she's like, you got some really gorgeous eyes. She goes, you know, what is the, uh, what is the story, you know? Like, um, what, what's your, what's your deal? And I, I kind of like, we only had a couple minutes to talk before the light turned and she drove off. But she goes, here, here's $20. And she did a U-turn at the light and I didn't see her again. And that was the end of that. And uh, two weeks later, again, it was right after, this was right after New Year's. And um, I'm standing in front of, I'm at the uh, the gas station. And, um, it's a marathon gas station, I believe. And there's a ice machine, you know, the ice machines you open to get ice out. And I'm sitting down right there and I'm trying to not be too noticeable because I don't want to get kicked off the property by the gas station attendant. And my sign, I got my sign, and I'm holding it there. And some people, when they get done pumping gas, they just come over there and bless me, you know, usually. And I don't ask anybody for money. I'm not this guy that just approaches everybody at the gas pumps or nothing like that. I don't do that. I've never done it, ever. And uh, I just sit there, and I saw the, this Volkswagen Cabrio again pull up over in this space by the air machine. And two beautiful blonde-headed girls got out, and they started walking towards the door. And I said, well, let me open the door for them, you know. So I got out and left my sign there and I opened the door for the ladies and they're like, I could tell they were drinking. They were a little bit tipsy and uh, they walked in the store and they grabbed a case of Michelob Ultra and put it on the counter and as they're walking out, I opened the door again. She goes, hey, you're that guy I gave $20 to last couple weeks ago, wasn't it? And I was like, yeah. And she said, um, she said, really? She goes, oh. Um, like, what are you doing? And she's like, do you want to go to this party tonight? And I'm like, are you crazy? I'm like, you know, I haven't, at this time, I don't think even even had a shower in a few months. And um, my, I got a beard, you know, and uh, I'm, 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 I can't even stand myself to smell myself most of the time, you know, out there. And uh, she didn't even, like, it didn't even phase her, bro. It didn't even, she didn't even flinch. You know, and that smile never broke. And that's what I was like, bro. I was like, something about this girl. And she's like, do you want to go to this party tonight? She goes, you can come with us. And her girlfriend's looking at her like she's insane. Her girlfriend's like, Amy, no. Are you crazy? This guy, you don't even know him. You're about to put him in the backseat of our car. And we're about to go to this party. And I'm feeling, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm the type of homeless drug addict that, you know, I'm always looking at the ground. And I'm, I just look like a sad case, bro. I, I'm not, I don't ever smile. I'm, I'm, I'm very sick, um, and I get in the car against my better judgment, 
and um, I get to this house. Now, Amy had been intimate with this guy at this house pre prior to me um, going there. And I didn't, I kind of knew about it, she told me. And I was like, yo, so you're using me basically as a cop block, right? I was like, so I should be getting paid for this, right? And she's like, well, um, I guess. She's like, how much do you need? And I was like, I need a, 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 well, if I'm leaving my post over here at the ice machine, I was like, <laughs> you know, a couple hundred dollars would be nice. Yeah. And, uh, that's your job, man. You know, you gotta take you away from your job. Yeah, that's right. That's my post right there, the ice machine. <laughs> you know, it's real important to me at the time. And, uh, so, uh, we drive and she's like, well, what, can we hit the ATM afterwards? And I'm like, I guess. And, uh, so we get to the party, and the guy's got a mound of cocaine um, at the thing. And I do not do cocaine at this time in my life. I just was not important to me at all. Um, you know, I probably want to wipe it off the table without even doing it or pretend like I did it and just wipe it off. But I didn't want to be a party pooper at the guy's house, and he kind of forced it on me. And I did a line, and I was like, it was garbage. And uh, so. I was like, look, let me take advantage of this This why I can. I was like, Amy, I need a shower. And uh, she's like, all right. She was okay. I said, well, I need some clothes. I need a shower. I need some clothes. I need, uh, you know. So I go in this guy's bathroom. I take a shower. I use his razor. I shave. I use his toothbrush to brush my teeth. Um, I use his underwear to put on, his socks. I got his shoes, His all his clothes on. And come out of the bathroom looking like a brand new man, just a little underweight. <laughs> and uh, she looks at me and she's, dude, she doesn't break, you know, her smile never breaks at all. And uh, she was just very, I wanted to know more about her, you know, but she was a little crazy, you know. And uh, I was like, she's got to be crazy to even, you know, look at me the way she she looks at me, you know, I wanted to say to her, do you look at everybody the way you look at me? But I didn't, and uh, I just kind of let it go, but <laughs> by the end of the night, at about 5 a.m., I was getting sick. She's actually got pictures on her phone that I'd like for you to post on this before the thing, okay. of me sleeping on the couch and how bad I looked, but this was after I got a shower and everything. Um, and uh, so I'm sleeping on the couch, and uh, Amy says, uh, she goes, OJ, you're like sweating really bad. She laid with me on this couch. Knowing her like boyfriend guy is in the other room and she's laying, she just lays with me, dude. And like has her arms on me the whole night. And uh, we didn't get too intimate. She did kiss me and it felt, it felt good, you know. Um, it felt good to, uh, to get a, a, a kiss from, uh, from somebody, you know, cause I hadn't had a kiss in years, bro, you know. Right. Um, it was special, I guess, and uh, but at the end of the day, my drugs are more important than any kind of emotion or feelings I'm gonna have towards any woman. Right. And um, so she, we leave the party. And her and her girlfriend are taking me back to the streets because that's where they're gonna drop me off. And she doesn't want to do it. She doesn't want to give me the money because first of all, I've done told her now. Look, I'm a drug addict. I'm a I'm a heroin addict. Um, at the time, I had all the hepatitis is, you know, and I was honest with her. I was like, look, you don't want nothing to do with me. You don't even want to be my friend. I don't know why you care about me so much, but you don't even want to be my friend. I promise you, you know, and she's just, it didn't break her, dude. And, uh, you know, she meant a lot to me at that time. She still does mean a lot to me um, as a friend. But, uh, so she got, went to the ATM machine and uh, she took out some money and gave it to me and she dropped me off at my boy's house. And I went and, uh, you know, got got my morning, uh, my get right in the morning. And uh, <clears throat> I uh, I walked up, walked around for a few months and I was standing on the corner again on Congress in North Lake. Months later, and uh, I see this line of traffic down the, down the uh, turning lane. I mean, it's way back. And... Uh, I see this girl's head, blonde hair, popping out of the window. She's waving like this. She's waving, and I'm like, oh, my God. I said, that's her. And I jump off the meeting, and I run to the Walgreens, and I'm, 
I'm trying to get away from her because I don't want no, I don't want all that attachment. You know what I mean? Right. At that time, but uh, she pulls in in her little Volkswagen Cabrio, top down. She looks like this California girl. You know what I mean? Like she wears a lot of white clothes and you know just really pristine. You know uh, the way she dresses. You know Tory Burke sandals. You know, <laughs> like she lives on the beach in Juno. And she's messing with a homeless guy and uh, to the, the story's crazy and so she pulls in Walgreens and I'm hiding and I come out of the store and finally I'm like hey what's up and she goes OJ she goes I have been looking for you everywhere everywhere and uh, she goes I have asked every homeless person for the last two months she goes I have drove to every bad neighborhood looking for you um, and nobody knows you and I said, everybody knows me. I said, you just went asking by the wrong name. I said, on the streets I go by OJ. And she goes, I told you my name was Owen. And uh, you know, my, I've been called OJ since I was a kid, but you know, out there I didn't want to let everybody know. You know, OJ is like a family name. You know, and uh, so she was asking everybody, you know, Owen, and uh, and uh, she, nobody knew me by that name, so. She just happened by a stroke of luck to run into me at the time when I was panhandling and again. And uh, so she gave me a cell phone. We went and bought a cell phone. She gave me a cell phone. gave me a hundred dollar bill that day. And she was like, look, call me. She's like, I want you to call me every night. And uh, I called her every single night for like a couple months. And uh, we had this special little relationship and then it got intimate. And uh, she was like, look, she goes, I want you to, do you want to change your life at all? And I was like, sure. I was like, absolutely, I want to change my life. Any opportunity given to me, I'll change. I'll try to change my life if the opportunity is there and I think it will will work. I said, but I don't ever see myself getting to the physical addiction, the physical part of this this uh, thing that's got a hold of me because I didn't think I could ever get through that physical part. And um, so she agreed to let me come to her beach house and I was to detox on her bed cold turkey. And I'm all down for it. And um, so I go to her house and this is the first time I've walked in here and it's white everything. You know, everything's white, white walls, white couch, white sheets, white pillowcases, white everything. And I'm like, oh wow, this is gonna be real fun. You know, I already know what this is about. I know what, what's gonna happen here. You know, it's gonna be a lot of dry heaving, throwing up, a lot of, you know, uh, you know, using the bathroom on myself probably. A lot of sweating involved and uh, flipping like a fish in the bed, and that's exactly what happened. For nine days, I did that, and uh, she was a trooper. She stuck it out with me for like nine days, and I didn't get any better after nine days. It actually got a lot worse because um, I was de detoxing off benzos and, and uh, fitting at the time. And it takes a lot longer to do that off mm -hmm. benzos. It's a long detox, and finally, she was the one that gave in. It wasn't me, and she's like, I you gotta get to a doctor. She's like, I don't care, I'll pay for it, whatever. She's like, you gotta get to a doctor. And so she took me to a Suboxone doctor. I got a Suboxone and Xanax, and uh, things got better. I started gaining weight, started eating, um, got fluids back in me, and I felt like a new man. I was able to shower every night at her house, and um, after about two weeks, I was ready to get a job. Um, I went back to the pipe fitting field and uh, started working for a company, and. Um, but I was taking too many Xanax at the time and I was cutting this piece of pipe on the job and um, it, it got caught up in the pipe and flung up with on me and filleted my face wide open. And I'll get you those pictures too so you can show everybody. Okay. Um, and uh, so Amy has to rush and pick me up from work and uh, I get all sewed up and she's like, you know, Amy's not an alcoholic, she's not a drug addict. She's not any of that, but she does like to drink wine, you know, and she doesn't understand the disease of uh, the thing we got, you know, she doesn't understand that. And uh, we're at the bar and she wants to, to have a few drinks and she's like, OJ, come on. She's like, you're like, no fun here. Like, Just have a few drinks. And I'm like, okay. And maybe I was pushing her to have a couple drinks too. Maybe it wasn't her just pushing me. I mean, I, you know, it looks fun and tempting <laughs> after sitting there for a while. And uh, so I did, I ordered some drinks and, uh, oh, I gotta go back a little bit. Okay. About her mom. So Amy, you know, was really proud of me at the time because I got a job and I'm doing the right thing. 
And what happens is she's like, I want you to meet my mom. But she goes, I don't want you to tell her anything about yourself. And I'm like, well, that's a problem. You know, that's a big problem. I was going to AA meetings too while I was on Xanax and Spock. And she's like, and I said, I gotta be honest about everything in my life right now. Um, I can't, you know, lie about my, my life and what I've been through to somebody. Um, I don't have to tell them, but if they ask me uh, in a roundabout way, I might have to get honest, you know, and she's like, no. She's like, you don't understand. I'm a very sheltered girl. Like, I never even saw a black guy till I was 22 years old. She, I was like, what? She's like, yeah, I'm from Northern Canada. <laughs> oh she was from Northern Canada, bro. She hadn't seen a black guy in person until she, <laughs> she was 22 years old, bro. And uh, I was just like, she oh my God. Own. Yeah, I don't know how. <laughs> I don't know how she ended up with me, and, and uh, yeah. so it was it was pretty crazy, and uh, I was just like, dude, this is insane, and and uh, so I went to meet her mom at this at this restaurant, and her mom buys a pitcher of beer to drink with Amy, and uh, of course a mug gets past my way, and I'm like, oh, this is not gonna end up the way you want it to, Amy. As bad as you want it to end up the way you want it to, it's not going to, and I knew it. And uh, so, you know, after about two or three pitchers of beer, you know, I'm waiting on mom to say, okay, I'm tired, I'm gonna go home. And uh, she went home and we went home and I went out and I got cracked and I came back and I was smoking on the patio by myself and Amy's trying to figure out what in the world is wrong with this guy because my jaw's moving sideways, I'm bug-eyed, I'm, she's like, what in the hell is going on with you? And I was keep I was like nothing. I'm walking around her house with a butcher knife, you know. And I'm walking her house, and she's like tripping, bro. She's like, "What in the hell?" And I'm scaring the hell out of this girl. I've only known her now for four four months, but I only lived with her in the house for a couple of months. She's like, "This guy is crazy." She calls her mom, and she's like, "Mom, this guy is nuts. He's completely out of his mind." And I was. I was definitely out of my mind. Um, and I thought everybody was out to get me. Especially with the psychosis that goes along with crack cocaine. And uh, anyway, make a long story short, man, it didn't work out once the crack cocaine got involved in the situation. And uh, Amy had to cut ties with me, but we always kept in contact. And she always holds a special place in my heart. I love her to death. Um, she loves me, I know that. And uh, we, we might not be in love with each other, but there's always a love and bond there after everything we've been through. And, I taught her a lot. <laughs> Let me just tell you that. She won't be picking up any more homeless people on the side of the road. <laughs>